and see. We've got... We need kind of like a, an intro, I think. Well, I think we could definitely start with introducing ourselves. Okay. That's, we're going to be talking to a mic, and this is kind of weird. <laughs> but I'm Eli, and, and this is my mom. Jazz. And we've decided to st- start a podcast. Just randomly. We're just trying things out, and I don't know. Podcast came to mind, and we're trying it out. So, here we are. We can have intro music. Yeah, we could definitely do intro music. Intro music. Oh, there we go. Now we're looking up random topics to talk about <laughs> because we have nothing to discuss. Okay. We're talking to people who aren't there yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hello, people who aren't there yet. Who will hopefully be here soon. Yes. If you like us, subscribe. If you don't, well, let us know down in the comment section. I'm sure you'll have no problems holding back. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to center this a little bit. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. That way, it can get both of us. No clue what this sounds like yet. What did you get into the most trouble for with your parents as a kid? (laughs) What did I get in trouble most? I don't know if I did really anything specifically, maybe. I can't really remember anything that you did that was... I was aggressive. Yeah, I mean, going after your sister with a baseball bat, you kind of got in trouble for that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Or, I don't know, I probably got in trouble for, like, grabbing Samantha's favorite plush toy rabbit and uh, ripped the ears off of it. Yeah, you probably got in trouble for that. Probably, if if she told. I probably was like, no, 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 don't tell mom, don't tell mom, I'll I'll fix it, you know, I'll make it better, it's okay. She probably didn't tell, knowing that kid... Because I don't recall that. Really? Oh my gosh. The things we did was insane. Oh, like the time when uh, we had Dylan pee in a bag to give to your friend Randy because he was such a dick. (laughs) We were just going to hand him a baggie full of of child pee. Yeah, that sounds like something you guys would do. (laughs) What do you think is the strangest tradition in our family? I don't think we have one. That's our tradition. We just don't have any. We don't have have any any traditions. That's not true. We We, have some traditions. We get together (laughs) every year. We get together every week. Every Sunday. Every Sunday together. But, I mean, that's the stuff other people's families do. So, I mean, that's not that. And then, like, we get together for the holidays as a big meal. I mean, something we always do medial every week turns into we have this one big festival. the one one. that we can actually get your sister to come to yeah exactly yeah because Catherine doesn't like to be social right Catherine is my sister as well I have three of them yeah yeah we have lots of kids (laughs) blah 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 I'm sorry you guys couldn't keep it wrapped (laughs) well two of them we meant to have (laughs) <laughs> Two of them complete accidents. Happy accidents, but complete accidents. Yeah, they they happened. It's one of those things. Oh, well, this one would apply if we'd ever had any family vacations. Let's see. The one time we went to Colorado a year ago? Yeah, that was like our only family vacation. Yeah, only family <laughs> vacation, and it takes me until I'm 22 years old, and we're missing Catherine. <laughs> Everyone's there. I took her separately for her birthday. <laughs> it's okay, we exactly, made up for it. Yeah, that's exactly how she would have preferred it anyway. Exactly. Uh, let's see, what's the funniest thing that you think happened on that vacation? Since that's really the only family vacation we've the got. The funniest thing that happened. Charlie throwing a fit because there weren't any real dinosaurs on the dinosaur walk. Yeah, she was mad because <laughs> we were looking at rocks and not actual dinosaurs. Yeah, she kept waiting for the dinosaurs. And there Charlie is any. my daughter. 
She, she is three years old at this time and a complete terror. <laughs> She'll be very, four in three months. She's very smart. Very smart. Sometimes smarter than we need her to be. Oh my God, for <laughs> real. She uh, But is, she kept throwing herself on the ground and... She's like, no, we're not, we're not looking at dinosaurs. Where's the dinosaurs? Where are the dinosaurs? <laughs> Where are the dinosaurs? Yep. Uh, I mean, but at the same time, she likes rocks, so I don't know what her problem was. Yeah, she kept stopping to play with the rocks. I think the... then again, we were also hiking a mile up the hill. True, true. We were hiking, and that is not fun for three-year-olds. I mean, we had a stroller, so, but, She you wouldn't know. use it. She had a stroller, but she didn't want to use it. <laughs> she didn't want to sit in it, but she also didn't want to walk. Right. And then it rained <laughs> when we got to the bottom <laughs> on the other side of the hill. <coughs> so we had to take a bus back up and retake the tour, basically, just hey, backwards. The second part of the tour was even more fun because we got more information and we got to ask questions. Fair enough. It was actually, it was, it was worth it. It was funny because they just dropped us off on the other side of the hill and he was like, yeah, that's fine. Yep, and what we else? just walked back to our car. Yep. It was hilarious. It was great. Okay, as a kid, did you ever do something wrong but manage to pin it on your siblings? Um, <laughs> I can remember one specific thing that I did, but I don't think I pl I pinned it on an animal instead of my, si <laughs> my sibling. I, um, okay, so you gave us pillows for Christmas, which is weird, but we liked it. I mean, we were really... I believe you guys asked for it. Okay, so we asked for pillows, I guess. I don't know. We were like seven, six. Me and Catherine were probably seven and six. I mean, and that's not something I would just get you. I mean, you, you so guys asked no, for No, it had to have been eight because Samantha was just born. You had to have been eight. Though. I had to have been eight. Catherine had to have been seven. And Samantha was... Newborn. Oh, it was a newborn. She was a few months old. So, in her crib, she had a pillow. I had a pillow. And Catherine had a pillow. And so... I was fucking with Catherine's pillow, and a string came un unraveled on it, and it started just unraveling. Mm -hmm. And this is so terrible. But then I put the the pillow with the string on it into the newborn's crib. Oh no! <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> and gave Catherine her pillow and blamed the whole thing on a cat, Austin's cat, your roommate. Yeah. At the time. <laughs> Uh, and I remember, uh -huh. I think the cat got, in tr like, I don't know, uh, the cat, like, got in trouble or something, and, but yeah, that's, like, one thing, I blamed something <laughs> on, on an cat. animal. Nobody could get in trouble in this situation. <laughs> it was totally fine. Biggest one would probably be, like, seeing a nuclear blast. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Those panic dreams where you're, like... This thing is about to happen. We have to evacuate quickly, but I'm packing oh, yeah, up my whole true. house yeah, yeah. at the same time. The house is on fire. or Yeah, yeah. Like, the ho like the fire is like in the backyard, and it's like moments away, and there's a timer ticking, and the police are like, come on, we gotta go. Right. Like, I've literally had a dream where a volcano erupted in Oklahoma. The lava was close to the house. And we had to evacuate quickly. Yeah. And so we're packing up the house. There's a timer going off uh, on a light in the in the living room or something. Uh huh. Uh, just one of those light fixtures that's sitting in the ceiling, and you know you see the time ticking down, and you're shoving sh stuff into uh, a bag, and like you're trying to haul crap to the the van that we used to have. And, like, we're just putting stuff out there, we're about to leave, and then molten lava is surrounding the porch. Uh, the tires on the van are going down, and I wake up, because we're about to die. <laughs> and the weird thing, the weird thing about dreams is that uh, the first, like, the last second before you wake up, that's your dream that you remember. All that happens in a second. In yeah. no time whatsoever. And it's so weird. Yeah, I've had dreams like that. I mean, literally, it's just moments before you wake up. Yeah. An entire lifetime could could play in your imagination. <laughs> in that split second before you wake up. In that split second before you wake up. Yeah. It's so, that's just, yeah, it's so interesting. 
Let's see. Let me see. Who's your celebrity look alike? My so oh god, do I have one? Who would you think that I would look like? I have no idea. Same goes for you. I've been told I look like Kathy Bates. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> of course, I was like 20 at the time, and at, you know she's a good 20, 15, 20 years <laughs> yeah. older than me. So I was really, really insulted. Yeah, I can <laughs> imagine. Really, like, re I was like, oh my god, I can't. Because that was right when she was in Misery. Yeah. So she was really overweight. I don't think I've ever seen And that was Misery. like her ugliest role. Like, really? they ugly oh, her up big time no. for that role. So I'm like... How I was so insulted. I would be too. That's really <laughs> messed up. But see now, I'm like she's badass from Disjointed and right, uh, American yeah, Horror Story yeah. and just all of the things that she's been doing. Oh, so you know now I'm like cool. I don't mind looking like her. That's that's cool. But right? when I was like 21, I was pissed. Yeah, it's like <laughs> rude. Thanks. <laughs> right. Oh, wow. Well, fuck you too. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you look like an asshole. <laughs> you look like an asshole. <laughs> Man, you, you look a lot like the celebrity and you look like a dick. <laughs> For real. All I'm right. so mad. What's your favorite book? Favorite book. And what, what, what book do you pretend is your favorite to sound smart? See, I don't do that. I don't do that either. I either like a book or I don't. Yeah, it's like, wow, I really like this book. I it, mean... Like, Maze Runner is my favorite series. It's not like I'm going to go blasting, right generally, but, you know, I love to read just romance novels. Yeah. It, just trashy old, you know, 300-page, <laughs> very predictable plot line. I stroke Romance novel. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, there's the sexy <laughs> parts, but, like, there's also the whole falling in love with one another. Yeah, and the then story they, they end up having from... some dramatic breakup, and then they get back together, uh -huh. and it's all sweet, and, you know, so... I like the ones where the girl is the hero of the main story, and... She just happens to fall in love with one of the people that's on the journey with her right. kind of thing. And then they're this team of super awesome people who take down the world. And, you know, I like shit like that. Or, like, the Maze Runner, where it's jam-packed packed full of action. And, uh, and I mean, just... Yeah, but I lost my really. train of thought there, but yeah. <laughs> Jam-packed, full of action, so on your... the edge of your seat, just dying to know what's happening on the next page. And I feel like people feel that way with Game of Thrones, but Maze Runner, See, if never... they had turned that shit into a sh TV show instead of a movie, I think it would have done so much better. Kind of like And Outlander. done it justice. Because I don't think it, I don't think they could have made a movie out of Outlander no, and had it actually be There's too many running parts good. for it to be... Successful, and that's what kind of sucks. Yeah, they would have had to remove they, about some of the movies these like days. Like Harry Potter, if they'd been able to make each one a six-hour movie instead Netflix. of Netflix, God, or a could TV you imagine series. sitting in a theater for six hours? Yeah, there would definitely have to be intermissions. Yeah. Oh yeah, like <laughs> for real, like Fuck thirty minutes yeah, stretch times, and, and, right? Oh yeah, so, I would, yeah, but it'd be like put on Netflix, right? You know, or just like I don't know, like I don't. They just all these I I don't know. Yeah. It's really hard, it's hard to make a book. books into something like and short like a movie because there's just too much information. Too yeah, it's like all these things make it what it is. Right. And that's what people love about it. It's like all the little running parts of this thing that make it I don't know. I don't know what to like how to explain right. what there's reading too many, is. It's, right. <laughs> there's too many layers. There's like, I mean. And especially on a long to, series. And to non-readers who don't understand what it's like to read. And they like those quick, short, get to the point things. Right. And I don't understand it. <laughs> I just wish I had more time for reading these days. but Right. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. We can listen on audiobook. Oh, I do a lot of audiobook. I can do audiobook all day long. Too broke for audiobook. 
I have an audio Audible subscription. Maybe I'll just snake off of yours. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't have an Audible subscri subscription because I already am subscribed to so many other things. Right. Like, I have Kindle Unlimited. But at the same time, I don't have time to read books. Well, see, at least with Kindle Unlimited, you can... Uh, you can uh, do Whisper Sync, and you you can get it read to you. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, like, it does have, like, an automatic, so it's like a robot voice reading to you. And I can see how that would be unappealing. It, it is. It, it It's hard to follow along when it's a robotic voice. Yeah, when it's monotone, same thing, every word, the same way said. Yes. Basically. Exactly. And it I can see how that can that's very unappealing to readers. But the like because said, there they is like whisper to hear... sync where basically you can sync <laughs> an audiobook with the actual Word reader. Be, yeah. Like uh, like a, a human voice reading it and it just follows along with the book. Yeah. So you can get an audio option on a lot of books, but not all of them. Yeah, and that and it also jacks up the price, which then well, again, yeah, because you have to pay. You have to pay for the book. The, you have to pay for the book, and, and then you have, you have to pay, pay for the, for the audio, audio version. Yeah, so basically, you might as well just pay for the whole thing on Audible, and that way you can just listen to it. And I've listened to audiobooks, and I also find those appealing. So either way, but I don't have money for books really, and the books that I do have are hard copies. Oh, well, yep. <clears throat> All right, well, we ran, out of, we ran out of that topic, didn't we? Wow, Jesus. <laughs> How long have we been doing this? I feel like we've been doing it for an hour. 20 minutes. 20 only minutes. 20 minutes. <laughs> it's not been an hour. <laughs> nope. This is why we come up with random topics. Maybe next time we'll be more prepared. I don't know. Well, this is our first one, and we just sort of decided to do it like an hour ago. So Fair enough. Why not? We were a little unprepared. Oh, yeah. Um, hmm. We're supposed to be taking pictures, but instead... I don't understand this one. Have you ever lied about an interest talent to impress somebody? If you I, have to go out of your way to impress someone... I, I, I don't understand it either. It's like, just tell me who you are. Yeah, really, just give me the straight-up truth about who you are, what you like. If you're boring, you're boring. I'm boring, too. Right, really. Like, I'm <laughs> interesting at all. If your best friend picked a tattoo for you to get, what would he, she pick? Huh. If this... Courtney could pick out a tattoo for me, how well does she know me? To know that she could pick something out for me that I would like. I think she could do it. I don't I know what she, she would could... pick, but I, I think she would do something that you would like. I think so, too. I'm pretty sure I Tom could would... trust her with a tattoo... Yeah. Something I'll trust I, him to your dad to pick out something for me. He'd pick a dick. It's like a random tattoo you have to get. <laughs> Dude, my cousin and he can is, pick it. My cousin and uh, okay. in uh, do the Ramones symbol, but it's just cock and balls and this. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, my cousin though he's doing uh, he's yeah. doing the Valentine's Day tattoos. He wouldn't hit. They even did a news story on him and shit. Really? Oh, wow. That's yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah, like, basically, you go in, your partner mm -hmm. picks the tattoo, and mm -hmm. you pick one for them, and then you book it blindfolded so you can't see it done until it's over. Oh, shit. Yep. That's cool as fuck. So. Oh. Yeah. Sometimes there I some wish pretty, I had a significant other. <laughs> there, there are some pretty cool ones. That's really, that's cool. That, yeah. I mean, like, if you are with someone for long enough... And dad would never get a tattoo. No, but... But, like, and they're willing to get a tattoo with you. And this this would be a thing without directly putting each other's names on it and devoting your love to one another. Right. Picking out a tattoo for each other. Yeah, I mean, that takes a lot of trust. It does. To allow somebody else to pick something to put on your body forever and ever. Yeah, I mean... I mean, if you... <laughs> I don't see how the sentimentality behind... Uh, tattoos specifically like uh, yeah well most of them mean something to the people who i get that yeah i do but also like i also 
understand my personal choice of the freedom to just have a tattoo. Yeah. It's just skin. Oh well. I mean, and it's something to look back on. It's like a yearbook on your body. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. Oh, I got this when I was doing this. And yeah, this I'm time a, frame, this was happening. Most like, of mine, I like, mean, I can tell you exactly where I got each of mine. Do you want to go through that right now? That's a perfect topic. Okay, I guess. Alright, okay. So, go ahead and start with your tattoos and your meanings. And explain your tattoos to the Okay, so though. the one on my ankle was the first one. Okay, describe it. Uh, it's a sun before it it's renewal. Go through the yeah. whole process. So initially, it, well, <coughs> I got it when tattooing was not legal in Oklahoma, so it was done with a guitar string and a car battery. Yep, sure did. Um, and India ink, I believe it was. Yeah, it was just that, India ink. Yeah, just that uh, for like calligraphy pens. Oh yeah, that liquid ink. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Ew. Yeah. So it's like, basically, it's pen ink? <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, so basically just not was, as, like, industrialized. It was a high-class and... prison <clears throat> tattoo, basically. I, oh, I just okay. wasn't, like, just outside in of prison. Bars, right, yeah. right, yeah. Because, I mean, that's all. That, that was the only option unless you wanted to drive to Texas. Right. So, uh, it was just simple. And if you're broke and desperate enough to get a tattoo <coughs> done illegally in, in Oklahoma... Oklahoma I'm pretty sure that you don't have the ability to just drive down to Texas. No, 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 no. That requires money. And, and I did not have that. I was young and yeah. poor. Uh, yeah. Was this before me or? I was four months pregnant with you. <laughs> oh my yeah. God, the 90s. <laughs> right, yeah. Like hepatitis C wasn't exactly something on my brain at the time. Oh my God. Right, so you are so lucky. <laughs> yeah, like totally did not think that thing that through. Don't judge. Anyway, um, don't judge, bitch. Don't. There are so many people doing so many things on YouTube these days. It's yeah, ridiculous. but you know, there's gonna be that one person who wants to run you down for doing something stupid when you're 23. But yeah, anyway, fair enough. Actually, I was only 22. Yeah, it was before Cause, me. Yeah, because you turned 23. I turned 23 right before, like two weeks before I had you. Yeah, three weeks. Anyway, so simple black and white. A uh, smiling sun with a, a moon next to it. And, uh, what, 20 some odd years later, I finally got it colored in. Yeah. Uh, I hated it. I hated it, hated it, hated it. You hated that tattoo, the one I mean, you I wanted liked it. so much. I liked it at first, yeah. but as it got older and began to fade and, and bleed a little, you know how tattoos do, they sort of spread out and... and fade it really started looking more and more like shit <laughs> yeah it looked like it was obviously done it was a shitty shitty tattoo and anyway and then what was your second tattoo the second actually i got the second and third together okay uh it was a two for one special at a texas tattoo parlor uh-huh i got that angry sun on the back on my back that your uncle drew uh -huh. <laughs> um the tattoo artist made it look a lot more angry than the original yeah he took a little more license with it huh. uh it was initially meant to be a whimsical sun and it turned into an angry sun huh. very colorful i mean he, he did a good job it just it, i don't think it matched the original intent yeah of what your uncle drew uh and then i got a a kanji that says i hope anyway doesn't say you know stupid white girl uh i don't think one single I think kanji would say I think that it, i think it says love uh, i'm pretty sure it does um it's like there's something on my wall that says wisdom but i'm not sure it <laughs> right, can also wisdom. say stupid white girl but i probably not could put <coughs> a chinese symbol on my body because that is silly like i get how aesthetically pleasing that can be especially because white people idealize the Chinese culture right? in but a lot was, of ways. It was the free tattoo that came along with the purchased tattoo. So, yeah. You know, I just kind of picked one off the wall. It's like, uh, eh, that one's fine. Yeah, that looks, that works. Love that work. looks like a black blob now. <laughs> it does, it does. Uh, yeah. Um, it could have been a lot better. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it looks like a big old black ball blob now. Uh, then... God, I wonder what the back of the leg feels like. Is it like the inner arm? 
No, I barely felt that one. No, okay. Yeah. I would imagine that it's like the but it inner. Was, I got it after I got the one on my back, so <clears> it's already sort of flooded with endorphins, and so yeah. Once the initial, once you got started, that was the. I didn't feel anything. Right. Um. Then I got my tramp stamp, which is the one. It's the three roses with y'all's names on it mm -hmm. that I eventually had to add your fourth sister or your third sister's name to my fourth child. <laughs> um, so there's got, a rose on your back with no, each of our names. Three roses with you first three's names. I got that in black and white. We were headed to the Tori Amos concert, so we had to go. I had to stop there. We, we, you know, we got the black and white. The Tori Amos concert where St. Louis in St. Louis in St. Louis. Yeah. Okay. So, and what year was this? That would have been 2002 because that's this when, is right before right Lily. before I got pregnant. I mean, like. I got that t tattoo December 4th. I found out I was pregnant with Lily on December 26th, 27th, <laughs> December 27th. So, so in we're a talking like three weeks later, I found out I was pregnant. Yeah, in a matter of weeks, it you became pregnant with Well, birth. I was probably already pregnant. And just didn't know it yet. Right. Yeah. I didn't find out until two days after Christmas. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I would have cried. I did. Uh, um, <laughs> and I only have one kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was I number couldn't imagine four. Having we were three. done. And, yeah, here I was pregnant again. Anyway, uh, back to the tattoos. God, guys, why can't you keep it together? <laughs> well, I got my tubes tied. Didn't have to worry about it after that. Tubes tied after Anyway, continuing after four. back to the tattoos. Yeah. This is a whole other topic of discussion. Then I went to visit Anthony in Taos when he was living there. Anthony being your GBF. My, yeah. Gay best friend. Right, right. Uh, who now lives in Denver. With his husband. With his They're new, so cute. With his new husband, and they are adorable, and I heart them. But anyway, uh, so I was visiting him, and I got the picture that Deborah drew. Deborah was my mother's roommate when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. She drew a picture of her, all of her friends back in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, sort of a cartoonish version of all of them, including my mother and myself. And so, basically, I took the people that I considered to be my family, her, Roger, Alan, and then, of course, my mom and myself, and had Roger a, and Alan also being good family friends. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were the closest thing I had to father figures as I was growing up. So, yeah. uh, so they, all the, the three of them have passed. Alan, Roger, and Deborah. Thank God, my mom is still with us. <laughs> She's <laughs> not She's, allowed to die. She is commanded to stay with us forever. She um, decreed yesterday that she is going to live to be three hundred, and so. we are fine with that. And I totally <laughs> am backing that one hundred percent. Yes, uh, longer would be even better. Right. Um, <laughs> Let's all just die together. Yeah, that'll work. No uh, one is allowed to be anyways, sad. So I got that, and then I got the tramp stamp colored in, and then... <laughs> the tramp stamp. The fourth child's name added. To my tramp stamp. To my tramp stamp. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they all have the same father, so I'm not that big of a tramp. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> then, let's see what was next. Then was the 420 tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> it was four dollars and twenty cents. I paid more for the tip than I paid for the tattoo, and that I, tells you all you need to know, right? And then I was dumb enough to let my waistband sit on it too long, and it got infected. So I lost most of the color and some of the line work. I mean, it looked really good until I let it get infected. Yeah. So now it looks like shit. Let's see. Then the. Th 13. I got a 13 on my wrist for my anniversary because I got married on Friday the 13th and it was a Friday the 13th. Mm -hmm. So I got a 13 in honor. And then the Bernie. Bernie Sanders. Got the Bernie Sanders tattoo. My Lord and Savior. <laughs> Our prophet. Our prophet. Uh, he has come with the pot us. Yeah, nobody's going to think that's blasphemous. <laughs> um, if anyone hates us, Welcome. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that's all, I think. I was 18 when I got my first one. You I bought it for, for me. Yeah. You bought yeah. it. It was right after I got my tongue ring. 
was her birthday present. It was my 18th birthday present, as it is, you have to be 18 in Oklahoma to get a tattoo. I think that's pretty much standard anywhere. Probably. But those for who don't know, you know. Right. We don't know who's listening. Um, but anyways, uh, I it got it right before, just a couple months before I found out I was pregnant with Charlie. Yeah. And, um, but at the time I was even thinking, like, I got my first tattoo just a couple months before I found out I was pregnant with you or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know I was pregnant with her yet, <laughs> but it's a, a yin yang symbol, but of two dogs sleeping together, one being black and one being white, um, on my calf, on my right leg. And, uh, <clears throat> that was my first one. It was done by, uh, Philadelphia's Finest in OKC on 23rd Body Piercing. I think that's... Or Atomic Lotus. Atomic, Atomic Lotus, yeah. Next to 23rd Street. <clears throat> They're Body affiliated. Piercing. They're basically the same people. Yeah, it's, it's the same business, just one side of that too, and one side is piercing. Yeah, I just th always think of that first one. Right. And then my second one... I want to say is the all the sounds of Charlotte sometimes into the night with Charlotte sometimes that I got two for your daughter. years ago. Yeah. yeah, I got this two years ago um, for Charlie because that's I named her Charlotte sometimes um, after the Cure song Charlotte sometimes, and then I have a uh, Mickey Mouse head bouncing over the letters like you would on the Disney Channel. Um, for the songs. For the songs. The Mickey Mouse head bouncing over the the words. and With a Mickey Mouse head on it. <coughs> on, and bump lines over the words. In honor of. In honor of. Alright, sorry about that. My alarm went off to uh, tweet about something. Um, but, <laughs> but the Mickey Mouse head is in honor of my nephew. Um, they were born a month and a day apart. So, um, I got that. And then I got my, uh, who in the world am I? Ah, oh, that's the great puzzle quote from the Alice in Wonderland book. And then I have the Mad Hatter's hat from Tim Burton, the Tim Burton version of Alice in Wonderland. With the caterpillar sitting on it. And, uh, and basically just the, uh, Mad Hatter's hat. And then I have, did I get... The lion before I got this? I think so, yeah. Okay, and then I got the lion. Uh, I got a, a tribal symbol type um, lion, head. lion head on my shoulder, on my right shoulder. And then I got uh, the cartoon version, the Disney cartoon version of Alice in Wonderland uh, characters all over my arm. Should I name each one? Nah. <laughs> Not unless you're one to spend a while. If you want me to do that, go ahead and let me know. But otherwise, at this time, I'm probably just not gonna because it's long-winded. Uh, it's but the line work is beautiful. The line work is beautiful. I got it done. I got my last three tattoos done at Skin Vandals um, in Norman. In Norman um, by Andy Jacobs. That's our artist at this time because he's really yeah, he's great. Done. He is super talented. My last three. Yeah, he's done our last three tattoos, and we usually get our tattoos together. So, hmm. yep. And so that's the end of our tattoo tour. <laughs> Those are our tattoos. Those are our tattoos. Okay, so let's do another topic. <clears throat> if all your clothes had to be one color forever, what color would they be? <laughs> that's easy. <laughs> Black, black, black all the way around. I think that's pretty much all that I own as it is. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I have a few color options and varieties in my wardrobe, but otherwise, I tend to stray towards the darker colors. Yeah, I prefer dark yeah. colors. That, that's an easy one for me. If you were the president, <laughs> God whoa. forbid, I do not want that job. But uh, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> it, all it says is, uh, what would you change about the decorations in the White House? I would really? touch. That is not. Would not be my first concern. No, I'd be thinking about you know, running the country. 
Right? I, I mean, okay. as president, I mean... The White House, the White House, I would almost consider like an Airbnb. Because you're going there... Yeah, it's not mine. I ain't going to live there forever. I don't give a shit what it looks like. I, had, I yeah, have a job I to be do. here for... I might like, be my here room, probably. I would want personalized to my needs and wants in life. I would bring life, my shit but, from uh, home. I wouldn't be worrying about how it's decorated. Yeah. You know, like, oh, okay. That'd be my first be husband's job. <laughs> Because, you know, you're my, I might be there anywhere from one day to eight years, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> one day to one eight day. years. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I may quit I, on day one, or you may be putting up with me for eight years. We'll right. see. Right, exactly. I, I couldn't... No, I would not be focusing on that at all. Yeah, that would not be my first concern. If we go into politics, right. this could be a whole other podcast. <laughs> What? Gun company. Remington the gun company is planning on filing bankruptcy. A gun company is filing bankruptcy? Well, no, I mean, nobody's worried about Obama taking your guns. <laughs> <laughs> gun sales have plummeted. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's hilarious. If you could be one superhero, which superhero would you be? I don't know. I think I'd go with Jessica Jones. Because she's a girl. <laughs> She's strong. She can fly? Miss Marvel? Miss Marvel? I don't know much about Miss Marvel. She can fly. She's strong. So, okay, basically. Quake. I mean, she she's... Quake's a badass, too. She's a badass, too. I mean, for real, though. Like, she's... I honestly so don't far, know all Marvel. <laughs> they're so far, they're all Marvel. We don't do DC in this house. <laughs> Wonder Woman, pack your shit and go home. <laughs> What, is she the only female superhero that I can what, think of for DC? I don't know. There's like that Hawk chick. And right. Is it the twins that have the ring? Is that the same? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the twins with their ring. Wonder Twin powers. Yeah, the Wonder Twins. <laughs> It reminds me of that 70s show when <laughs> Kelso and Jackie were the Wonder Twins <laughs> and their weird superhero fantasy. <laughs> Donna was like Wonder Woman and, and Eric was Superman. <laughs> Fez was Batman and Hyde was... I do not remember. I don't remember at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't remember. That's funny because Hyde's my favorite character on that 70s show. And I don't fucking remember what he was wearing, but everybody else, you know, whatever. He was probably wearing his fucking glasses and leather coat. Probably just did not. <laughs> did not dress up for it at all. He's like, nah. I, I don't know. remember the episode, but Shit, that's probably, the character. I could right literally, there. like, look it up right now and <laughs> just be like, yep. Well, let's not do that. <laughs> let's not do that. Um, okay, so superheroes. I have no idea. You. You don't know enough about superhero. No. Do you have picked one to be my? What about shit. what about uh, heroes? TV show Claire. I definitely have Claire's powers. Heroes. Yeah. The ability to heal. To heal. Yeah, that would be a really handy skill. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and what about uh? Micah would be the only one working. Micah. <laughs> right, yeah, your dad would want to be able to get into the His computers. mom was wacko. I don't know if I would want to have her power or whatever it is. Oh, was, I don't remember her power. It, I don't think it was her specifically. I think it was another was entity. Was she like multiple clones or something? Or something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> I think, yeah, something like I that. I mean, one did ice. The other one was like a flipped out, flame Nikita type person. Like, that personality kicked in or something. Yeah, and, like, she would just go to sleep, basically, and then wake up to find dead bodies around her. Alright, next question. Uh, it says, if you would ind endorse a brand, which brand would it be? I don't know. If we had a... Nope. No clue. Nope. Our own brand of sex toys. Which celebrity would you pick to exchange lives with? Oh, none. 
No. 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 Why? Too and much? Just too much? Too much. Too many people constantly in your shit. Yeah. Did you know that <laughs> there are certain celebrities that, like, specifically have it contractually ob ob blah, 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 contractually obligated to not speak to them, specifically. Just don't. Like, uh, Will Smith. Uh, I heard it on the David Dobrik podcast. Uh, Will Smith has his maids sign a contract saying that they cannot talk to him specifically. Wow. Because yes. so many people are in his face all of the time. He just wants his staff to be just to not, invisible. Just, just don't. Just don't talk to me. Leave like, me just alone. let me live in my house without you having to talk to me about something that I've done or that you've seen or that... You know, Unless I'll, it's directly related to your work as my housekeeper, stay the fuck out of my face. Pretty much. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Ellen you, does the same thing. Because you, you have so many people constantly in your business. Up your butt the yeah. whole time. I, I think if in that situation, they, they would pretty much have to stay out of my shit and... Non disclosure for sure. Okay, oh, can, yeah. Like, if, you can't talk you about anything talk about that goes Anything in this house. that happens. Now, in when, this house. I mean, when yeah. would you switch? Because it would suck to get the switch. You're like on stage or something. You don't know any of the lines for the movie that you're going to be in or anything. You'd just be like, Oh, dude, like, like if you switch, if you dance, switch like, bodies and you're like, Oh, yeah, no, set, yeah, like, fuck <laughs> that. Uh-uh. You're sitting, I mean, on, you're talking like you're sitting on the switch, set for the, for the... I, mean, I think it's more like trade lives Fantastic with beast. more than like switch bodies with. Like, who would you trade lives with? I don't... None of them. I mean, it doesn't say specifically that it can't be. Like, well, yeah, I mean, but... Bodies, like... Still, no. I'm, it's like, you don't... You schedule it for work and everything. It's like, I won't be me that day. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just, just, <coughs> I'm not going to be there mentally. No, no, you're like, method actor, lazy bum on the couch, method acting. Yeah. <laughs> this is me, method acting. Brad Pitt. I'm really into character. For Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt for True Romance. romance. <laughs> I have not seen True Romance. Oh my god. Oh, good god. Uh, iconic movie of the 90s. Um, was it appropriate for me when I was a kid to watch? Oh, hell no. no. I'm that's probably why I haven't times, watched it. The amount of times we watched them, I'm surprised you haven't seen Honestly, it. Honestly, though, yeah, we watched it so many times. Love that movie. But Brad Pitt's like the ultimate stoner oh, yeah. burnout in that movie. Yep, no. Yeah. Smoking for my honey bear bomb. Yeah. Alright, next topic. <clears throat> If you're trying to sing, uh, trying out for a singing reality show, <laughs> <laughs> what song would you sing? Like, what song is in your head right now? Hakuna Matata. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful phrase. Uh, I don't know. There's this one song by Dodie Clark from, from YouTube. That what I, screen? What are you talking about? Yeah, if I can speak Russian. Right, just sing Russian Celtic <laughs> on an American reality singing show. They're like, yeah, yeah, sure. Hey, okay. that, that like the voice, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what language you're singing in. I guess, fair enough. It's just the sounds that are coming out of your mouth. Right, like, uh, but, but nobody wants to hear that. I, I don't know, I'd probably sing Content by Dodie Clark, because that's like, she just came out with it recently, and it's like my jam right now. I mean, it's good. It's a good uh, song. I'd say like Tracy Chapman's probably one of the most suited to, to my... Your tone of... Right. That yeah. you can hit. Yeah, I can actually like sing along with her without sounding too horrible. Who is this? Tracy Chapman. Yeah. She had a couple of hits back in the 90s. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have I heard any of her stuff? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. For sure. And see, here's the thing about my raising, is that these two never told me what we were listening to, 
But we listened to all kinds of music growing up. But I never knew what kind of bands or the song name. It never name. occurred to me to tell you. Yeah. I don't know why, but <laughs> it just, it never did. I mean, I don't think we even asked. No. Anyways. And it never occurred to me to tell you. I don't think, I mean, if but, it doesn't I come mean, up in conversation, I can't blame you wholeheartedly for it. Like, because, like, we never asked. It didn't matter. We were listening to good music. Either right. way, it didn't really matter. So, I mean... So we would listen to all this music, and then as I got older, people were like, have you heard of this band? And I'd be like, I don't know. So I'd, you know, type it into YouTube and be like, oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This, oh, yeah. This is actually one of my favorite ones. I've okay, turn it off before. Yeah, we don't want to get any copyright issues. We're going to get dinged. It's... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and then... Uh, yeah, I've I've heard that, and then I don't know. So I was like, yeah, I I, I type it into YouTube, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I totally I've heard the song a thousand times. <laughs> just didn't know who the band. Just was. didn't know who the band was. Like I don't. I just answer. If people are like, oh, have you heard this band? I'm just like, I don't know. Let me type it in real quick. I don't really give them a yes or no answer because I couldn't possibly until know. you actually heard a song or two. Yeah, until I've heard like one of their really, you know popular songs for sure like give me a popular song yeah because pretty much a lot of 90s grunge 80s punk some 80s pop mm -hmm. some 80s hair band uh definitely lots of 90s grunge and punk right but i also like lesbian music like you know tracy chapman and melissa etheridge and right yeah okay so <clears throat> if you had uh -oh. A good amount of money. Uh huh. What would you spend it on? Like, uh, I mean, it, all it says I mean, is a lot of money, but let's I, let's say you had a million dollars. A million dollars. A million dollars. A million dollars. It's a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Liza Koshy. Uh, let's see. If I just had, I mean, aside from just like. Bills are paid, no debt hanging over my head, and I have a million dollars, or... Let... Sure. sure, yeah. Okay. Free and clear a million dollars. Free and clear a million Don't dollars. Don't have to spend it on anything responsible. No strings attached. Just my money. Just no your taxes, money. Just... No taxes were taken out of it. I got they a million dollars cold cash. They didn't take cash. your student, yeah, student you know, loans. You, you paid off your house, your cars. <laughs> okay. Um, I would definitely be doing some traveling. Where would... I mean, I know where you would go, but where's the first place that you would go? Scotland would Scotland. be absolutely the first place. I, I'd probably head. Do you for... have like a list in mind, like a list of? Well, places I that mean, you would like I know because you know our family name is is McLaughlin. Yeah. You know, granted, it was changed once we got here to to just, to just Laughlin. Laughlin. Uh, but you know, I'd kind of want to visit McLaugh McLaughlin lands. Uh, because you know, that's where our family came from. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just learn a little bit about our ancestral past. A little bit, yeah. Before, um, I mean. And of course, I'd pretty much hit the British Isles in general. You know, Ireland, UK, you know, just the UK in general. Right. Um, just see that sh stuff in person. I don't know why you're watching your language now. We've been cussing through this whole fucking thing. <laughs> when I catch it. <laughs> anyway, but yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> if there weren't all the political tensions, I would probably be interested in seeing Russia. Mm -hmm. Just to Isn't see. That, like, just to see the. Yeah, well, they're not exactly American friendly. Yeah. I can so get, it's I not can like that. it's not a place I'm I'm headed for. Yeah, it's like I would like to. Were the political thing a little less tense? You know, were, were we, things a little less? If I didn't have to deal with the whole political issue, I would be interested in seeing Russia just for its history and its people and its. I mean, because the land is beautiful when it's not covered in twenty feet of snow. But it's like when you think Russia, you think just. Overlord, take you know. Right, yeah. You think communist country and snow and ice, and I know that there's a lot snow more to it than and vodka. But yeah, snow I mean, but I know that there's a lot more to that country people. than that, and it would be interesting to see that. But at the same time, I know that that's not a place. That, as an American, I would be exactly welcome. 
Yeah. But it would be something that would be interesting to see. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't mind going to Germany. Germany would be fun. Uh, of course, I'd like, you know, the Netherlands. I would absolutely like, is to, there, visit the, like to visit the Netherlands. Is there a place where you can, like, see the Berlin Wall where it used to stand? Well, there yeah, has to be. Berlin. I mean, <laughs> do they have a section you where the wall see, there used are... to be? Well, yeah. I mean, oh, it split a city in half. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I know that you can go see sections of the walls and museums and stuff. Mm -hmm. too, I would so. like to see that. That would be interesting, yeah. I would like to... It would be... I would like to visit... Interesting and sombering to to visit... Uh, to actually see Like, it. all the the concentration camp areas and stuff. I, I, it would put reality into right, perspective. It, it would be... Yeah. I can see that. It would... And just to get the it history. would be interesting i mean granted yeah it's a sad it would be sad and it, but it would be i don't know humbling it, humbling maybe i don't know if that's the word that i not uh, i mean it would be very somber but at the same time it would be interesting to know yeah exactly just to, um, just you know, to and I we mean, do just have to, some, I mean, I don't know anything it puts, about it, I mean, but we do have some You German learn about heritage. it in school, and you think about this horrible thing, and you try to think about Holiness. what that would be like, but to stand in the place where it happened, right. or near it, would put reality into perspective. Yeah, it would really kind of bring that whole it would It would thing really, home. yeah, it would. Um... Let's see, where else would I like to... Japan. I would really like to see Japan. <coughs> I mean, I know that there's a lot of places as a white person we wouldn't be allowed to go, but it's there's so, still lots that we would get to see. It would be so weird to experience that as a white person. To be the one on the receiving end of racism? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be... Yeah, it would, it, that would actually be very... Like, I like... The, interesting like, perspective. I watched this we do Oprah Winfrey thing. Feel a lot of privilege here. Oh yeah, definitely. Like I watched this Oprah Winfrey thing, and uh, it was a segment in the I want to say like the early nineties mm -hmm. that she did, where a white male, young white male, uh, took pills to dye his skin brown, like uh -huh. a dark brown. They shaved all of his hair off, and documented his experience. At what as what happened, and only after a week he he stopped doing it. He was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, he well, gave up after a week. He I mean, Chris Rock. It. I don't I don't know the exact quote, but it basically boils down to you know even the poorest white man wouldn't trade places with me, and I'm rich. Yeah, you know uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it, because as white people here in America, we don't experience racism. Not really. Where we don't get it, the looks, the dirty looks. Right, we don't, we don't get, get the, the automatic assumptions about our character just based on the color of our skin. Yeah, before we, they they have already decided who we are in ten seconds. You know, yeah. before they get to know anything about us, they've already decided in the ten seconds that they saw me, that they knew who I was. Right. Well, and, and honestly, we get a little bit of that as women. That's what we they get said a little bit of that sisters. as big women. People make a lot of assumptions about us based on our size. My health, like people think that I drink soda all day, and that and eat cake and cookies all eat the time. Eat cake and cookies, and I finally had a. I mean, I had a discussion with someone who had put that into perspective. Um, a coworker of mine. Uh, is very skinny, kind of, you know, fit. He's, you know, he's a well attractive. He's a, he's an right. attractive male. I don't find him attractive personally. Right, but he is a good looking guy. But he's a good looking. I mean, if I was fits. anybody else but his coworker, I would probably see him as you know as right. attractive. Right. But I know him. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> we were talking about the fact that he drinks soda and eats a lot of junk food and blah 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 and how I don't do a lot of that like I, I eat food that's not really healthy for you but I mean who doesn't in in a poor you know situation but I drink water all the time and I drink coffee that's it that that's my sugar overload for the entire day <laughs> uh, but I do work at Taco Bell so I eat food there as well while I'm at work 
and so I eat a lot of tortillas and mm -hmm. I get a lot of carbs in. Right. And tortillas starch. A lot of sugar. In it. sugar. Oh yeah, because not like the tortillas we buy here at home. No, no, no. Yeah, it's the totally different. So he was like, "That's you know actually kind of weird." He's like, "He's like I eat like maybe a thousand calories just for a meal." Mm -hmm. I was like, I have to watch <laughs> to make sure I don't eat more than a thousand calories a meal because that would mean 3,000 calories in a day. And you're not burning it somehow. Uh-uh. I don't, I don't eat that many calories in a day because I keep a, you know, a loose track of about how much I take in and it can't be more than 2,000. Which is supposed to be... At my weight currently is sustainable right and i have been sustaining around 316 right so i mean yeah so people make judgments based on how i look before they even get to talk to me just they just think i'm lazy. a fat lazy working at taco bell dumb bitch but i'm the hardest working person in that store right like i mean that's what you think <laughs> yeah that's what i think not really. I, my team is great, like a lot of the people that I work with, but there are some people in the store who could do better, and it really irks me that they don't. Especially since they, you know, they're much skinnier and fit than I am. Right. And I'm able to bust my ass and get shit done. People make assumptions about you. And I mean, like, working <coughs> from home. Yeah. My people... supervisor only knows basically what I've told her about myself. Right. And, you know, she knows I'm a grandma, and, yeah. you know, she knows I got four kids, and she knows I'm married, and, you know, she know you know you she knows my approximate age, and, well, when I was talking to her recently, I mentioned the type of music I was into, and she's like, I wouldn't have guessed. Oh, yeah. I'm sure <laughs> nobody can guess that I listen to Metallica, Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> but, I mean, that's basically what I'm saying about assumptions. She assumed the type of person I was, the type of music I might listen to based on what you sound like, what you the look like. And the fact or... that I'm a grandmother and, you know, grandmas don't listen to grunge and punk, right? That's funny! Oh my god, that's so weird to think about. It's like, yeah, I mean, you are a grandma, but at the same time, I didn't really think of you as a grandma. Right. Like, nobody would assume my grandmother acts the way she does oh, well, no. at her age. No. She's 68 years old. She's as active as ever. She's probably more active than I am. Yeah, she's locally active. She she she, she, she has a, a book of appointments and things she that she is, needs to do. And yeah, her she's a busy woman. Insane. She's a busy woman and I aspire to be her. Right. I love my grandmother we, so much. Yeah, no kidding. She's a great woman and she is fucking determined to make sure age doesn't catch up with her. Oh, yeah. I just, mean, she was... What was her heaviest weight before her gastric bypass? About uh, my weight, maybe? No, actually, she was, she was a bit healthy. I believe she got up to about 350. Yeah, she was, she was heavy. Yeah, me. Yeah. I was she 20 pounds. She looked about like you, but three inches taller. Yeah. So... I remember that, that's she the extra fifty the pounds right there. She yeah, she was a squishy woman. You know, and as a little and kid, a I loved time. it because I oh, loved yeah. having a squishy mom. Yeah. Oh and my god, squishy moms give the best hugs. Yeah. <laughs> and she didn't like with me. I started out when I was eight, and she ate healthy. That that's what's crazy. She was a vegetarian for a good portion of that. Yeah. So I mean, your weight issues are definitely probably have a genetic component. Oh, yeah. I bet you never, we, no, I never really put that one together it. either. No, because I've been fat for so long, but it's, it has really, I mean, I eat a lot, she but She struggled not too with much. it throughout her childhood and teenage years as well. Like, I mean, a lot of the times I skip dinner. Like, just because I'm, I'm either not hungry yet or just the lack or need of, to eat. Right. She like, eats munching all day. Probably. I, I, you know, I snack here and there. But not too much. Like, I have a burrito in the morning and a hash brown. And then I drink coffee and water the rest of the day until lunch where I have a cantina salad. And, uh, I mean, it has rice and shit in it. Right. Rice and chicken. 
romaine lettuce, <laughs> shit. pico, shit. cheddar <laughs> cheese. I mean, it's yeah. garbage, but at the same time, like, I still have a vegetable in my day, root, my, you know, I have a vegetable in my routine. I ha- It has tomatoes and cilantro and onions in it. Well, we generally have a fairly <laughs> well-balanced meal on the table at dinner. Yeah. So, I mean, I try loosely, but, I mean, I don't, when I have cereal, I don't have... We could exercise more. We could exercise more, and that would greatly enhance our chances of losing weight because we're doing all the food parts, but we're not active. Maybe That's our turn problem. The podcast into a walk and talk, right? <laughs> oh, that would be cool. A little. Oh, we could do that. Totally. Yeah, a walk and talk. That would be cool. That's that's definitely something to think about. Anyways, train of thought. Where did it go? <laughs> um. Okay. We have the at we have the eating part down, ish loosely. I mean, we eat like we eat. We're not eating as well as we were when I was making enough money that we could spend four hundred dollars every two weeks on groceries. Yeah, but we're eating better than when we were living on food stamps. Fair enough. So yeah, or well, we haven't lived on food stamps in over ten years. So more like how we ate after that but we still ate like we were on food stamps <laughs> because we needed to save money right we still had to we were still spend broke. like we were eating yeah, on food stamps. Like, we were just paying taxes on the money yeah exactly or on the food um so yeah i, I mean yeah and that didn't help our, with my you know no, weight gain as a kid i mean we ate when very poorly. your only part your, the only meal is ramen the hamburger sandwiches helmet, hamburger helper ramen sandwiches potato, spaghetti, potatoes, potatoes and meat fried with potatoes corn. yeah and put some ketchup on it and there you go there's dinner That's yeah enough to fill you well yeah with no nutritional balance whatsoever no because vegetables are expensive that's the sad fact that we're living in in this country right now, yeah. which is really disappointing. The good for you food is expensive and not subsidized, and the junk food is subsidized. And then you get shamed for being overweight, even though you can't afford that healthy food. Right. And people want to... Because I spend the same amount, and it's all vegetables, and, and you know we're not going to make it through them. I hate those pictures that circular, circulate around Facebook and stuff. It's like, oh, this fridge is full you just paid for it on food stamps. Uh-huh. And yeah, that you don't food have a has job. to last a month. Yeah, that food has to last me a month. How <laughs> dare you assume anything about me? It's a minuscule amount, so I can't, like, me and my four kids and my husband and our roommates are going to eat yeah, off of this. Yeah, we, at, our, at the height of us getting food stamps, we had six people to feed. That's what we got our food stamps for. Yeah. And we got about seven hundred dollars a month to feed six people for a month. And we spend four hundred dollars currently. We now spend probably two fifty a week. To or three hundred every two weeks. So we actually probably spend a little bit less than we did on food stamps. Well, yeah. And we're still feeding the same amount of people because we combine my kitchen with your food. Right. (laughs) Pretty much, yeah. Uh, Because mine isn't working. You know, but we were trying, we ultimately were feeding more people than just the six that were on the food stamps because we were feeding all our friends and everything that were living there. Yeah. The roommates and stuff. Yeah. Steve who cooked dinner and like, and then... You know, just the random scragglers here and there. Right. Just to fill their tummies and, like... But still, like, there are people out there starving. <laughs> yeah. And when you've got food, you, you... But that was here in Oklahoma. Yeah. In the 90s and early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Food was cheaper. I remember when we had to sell parking spaces by OU... To eat pizza that night, yeah. just to eat something for the evening, just to, or you know and have breakfast a little bit in the morning. Extra money and yeah, I mean, you know, just these spare little things that so that we could have a little more. Yep. Splurge a little bit, you yep. know. And I don't know. I just that was like one standing thing out of you know childhood of many. Yeah. Never having <laughs> enough. Yeah. Never quite having enough. 
It was, it was fine. You know, I mean, people, <coughs> when I tell people about it, they're like, oh, Eli, you know, I feel so, you know, it's like, no, it wasn't that bad. Like, it could have been so much worse. I talk to people who have had it so much worse than myself. Oh, and your parents were married. My parents were together. We were employed or in school. We always had a roof over our head. You guys never wanted for, you know, warmth, water, roof. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've struggled in a lot of ways. I mean, but, who doesn't? I right. Mean, there but we were, are ups and downs to everything. We we never had a college education, and that's a lot not of minimal, true. You didn't have a. We didn't have a college degree. Degree. You still had a we college still education. Had that, I mean, yeah, I, you were I've, still educated for how long? Uh, I was. I'd say I probably have about two, maybe three semesters, and I can have my degree. Uh, I was in school for about four years. Yeah. Your dad was in school for what, two, three? I don't remember. I want to say it was like two or three. Alright, we're getting close to about an hour here. Alright. Well, we can wrap it up. Alright, so, college education, sad times, blah, blah. Alright. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get more into it at some point. Oh yeah, we have a long time to go. But that's a little bit about us. Um, if you're interested, subscribe. If you're not, that's fine. Um, like we're just button. trying this out. Uh, yeah, hit the like button. <laughs> um, tell us what you think down in the comments below. What we could work on, topics we could talk about, stuff like that. If you're, if you are interested, and you would like to see something nice. come out of this, don't be mean. Don't be mean, because that's just dumb. Um, because we're trying. This, I mean, YouTube's a community, right? <laughs> that's what I've gathered so far. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's us. I'm Eli. I'm Jazz. And, uh, it was nice meeting you.